Hey folks, uh, welcome to Science Talk. I'm your host, Jim Massa. I want to share with you something that uh, uh, Jet Propulsion Laboratory, JPL, uh, put out on their webpage. And it discussed the Tonga eruption blasted unprecedented amount of water into the stratosphere. Now, there was the potential to put uh, sulfur into the atmosphere, which would then have uh, a cooling effect on, t on global temperatures. However, that really did not, it was not significant. That really did not come to pass. The amount of sulfur probably was weakened, but what was thrown into the atmosphere, as we see here, was a huge amount of water into the stratosphere. And water vapor is a greenhouse gas. So let's first take a look at this uh, basically looping video. You know, it shows an umbrella cloud ge generated by the underwater eruption of the Hunga Tonga Hunga Hapai volcano that occurred on January 15th of 2022. And as you can see, it's a wee bit of a puff with a whole bunch of uh, materials that expelled. The GOES-17 satellite captured a series of images that also show crescent-shaped shock waves and lightning strikes. You can see the shock waves uh, down towards the lower part of the uh, frame there and also to the right, like right over here, you know, the crescent shock waves. Okay. The huge amount of water vapor hurled into the atmosphere as detected by NASA's microwave limb sounder could end up temporarily warming Earth's surface. In other words, you, what they're saying is there'll be an added warming, but then you can subtract that signal from the general warming trend that's taking place. In other words, it may bump the temperatures up a bit, but then as the effects uh, wear off, for lack of a better term, uh, then the warming probably will, will fall back to the overall general trend. Now, this uh, when it erupted, it did send a tsunami moving around the oceans, set off a sonic boom that it went around the planet twice. The underwater eruption in the South Pacific Ocean also blasted an enormous plume of water vapor in the Earth's atmosphere, enough to fill more than 58,000 Olympic-sized swimming pools. It's really interesting. They, uh, you always make a reference to how many Olympic-sized swimming pools. The sheer amount of water vapor could be enough to temporarily affect Earth's global average temperature. We've never seen anything like this, said uh, Louis Milan, an atmospheric scientist at NASA's JPL in Southern Cal. He, uh, the PI, in a new study examining the amount of water vapor that the Tonga volcano injected into the stratosphere. That is the layer of the atmosphere. It's about 8 and 33 miles above the Earth's surface, or 12 and 53 kilometers. This satellite image shows an intact Hunga Tonga Hunga Hapai in April 2015, obviously uh, some nearly seven years before it did go a uh, puff, before an explosive underwater volcanic eruption obliterated most of the Polynesian island in January 2022. In the study published in Geophysical Research Letters, Milan and his uh, colleagues estimate that the Tonga eruption sent about 146 teragrams of water vapor into the Earth's atmosphere. Now, a teragram is equal to uh, a trillion uh, grams. A trillion is, like 10 to the 12th, okay? So, and that, and that amount is equal to 10% of the water uh, already present in that atmospheric layer. So that's nearly four times the amount of water vapor the scientists estimated in the 1991 Mount Pinatubo eruption in the Philippines. The Milan analyzed the data from the uh, MLS uh, instrument on NASA's Aura the satellite, microwave limb sounder. That measures atmospheric gases, including water vapor and ozone. After the volcano erupted, the MLS team started seeing water vapor readings that were off the charts. We have to carefully inspect all the measurements in the plume to make sure they were trustworthy. Uh, 
understandable. So here's an image taken from January 16, 2022, shows the ash plume right here from that volcano, from that eruption that occurred the day before. This was taken from the uh, ISS, the International Space Station. If I was seeing that, I go, oh, something's up. <laughs> Volcanic eruptions rarely inject much water into the stratosphere. In the 18 years that NASA has been taking measurements, only two other eruptions, the 2008 Kasatochi event in Alaska and the 2015 uh, Calbuco eruption in Chile sent appreciable amounts of water vapor to such high lat altitudes. But those were mere blips compared to how much the Tonga event spewed into the stratosphere. The water vapor from these two events, Kathatochi, Calbuco, uh, quickly dissipated. The excess water vapor injected by the Tonga, however, could remain in the stratosphere for several years. This extra water vapor could influence atmospheric chemistry, boosting certain chemical reactions that could temporarily worsen depletion of the ozone layer. So don't go out there and sunbathe. It could also influence surface temperatures. Massive volcanic eruptions like Krakatoa and Mount uh, Pinatubo typically cool Earth's surface by ejecting gases, dust, ash that reflect sunlight back into space. In contrast, the Tonga volcano did not inject large amounts of aerosols into the stratosphere. And the huge amounts of water vapor from the eruption may have a small temporary warming effect since water vapor traps heat. The effect would dissipate when the extra water vapor cycles out of the stratosphere and would not be enough to noticeably exacerbate climate change effects. The sheer amount of water injected into the stratosphere was likely only possible because the underwater volcano's caldera, which is a basin-shaped sh depression, usually formed after magma erupts or drains from a shallow chamber beneath the volcano, was at just the right depth in the ocean, about 490 feet, 150 meters down, any shallower, and there would not have been enough seawater superheated by the erupting magma to account for the stratospheric water vapor values Milan and his uh, colleagues observed. Any deeper and immense pressures in the ocean depths could have muted the eruption. This is just the right depth to basically steam boil, you know, like a pressure cooker, literally. And it just blew and forced all that vapor into the stratosphere. The MLS instrument was well situated to detect this water vapor plume because it observes natural microwave signals emitted from Earth's atmosphere. Measuring these signals enables MLS to quote unquote see through the obstacles like ash clouds that can blind other instruments measuring water vapor in the stratosphere. <clears throat> MLS was the only instrument with uh, dense enough coverage to capture the water vapor plume as it happened and the only one that wasn't affected by the ash that the volcano released. And the MLS was designed, built by JPL, which is part of NASA, etc. It was really interesting that instead of releasing a lot of ash, which it did, but it didn't make it into the atmosphere, apparently, but it did push through a lot of water vapor which could give a temporary increased warming in addition to the other warmings that we have been experiencing as of late. Hello folks, this is Jim here with Science Talk, asking you to please subscribe to my channel and to inform others of my channel and of the work that I do. Please share to social media platforms that you use. Also, as a reminder, don't forget to click the bell so that you know when I load up more videos. Finally, I ask that you support the work that I do by becoming a patron at patreon.com. Details in the description box below. Thank you for your support.